welcome everybody to my YouTube channel, <clears throat> Red Devil FM. My first series, I'm going to be doing a sort of Real Madrid rebuild, and it's obviously going to be based on the Galacticos, which was something that is most popularly known from the two, early 2000s, where Florentino Perez was in charge, and he emphasised the greatness of signing superstar players and then putting them all into a world-class team. So some of the main like players that were known were Figo, who they signed in 2000, 60 million euros from Barcelona, Zidane for 73 and a half million euros from Juventus in 2001, the Brazilian Ronaldo from Inter for 45 million euros in 2002, and then also Beckham in 2003 for 37 and a half million euros from Man United. Now those transfers, when you look at the actual size of them, is not actually that big in today's football. So you'll probably find that during this season, this series, we're probably going to be spending like over a hundred easily on like one signing every season. So the aim is every season we're going to make at least one big like superstar signing. This is going to be based for six seasons because the original Galacticos, I think it was from like 2000 to 2006, maybe even 2007. Well, it was 2006, I think, when Perez resigned because it clearly had stopped working. But 2000, it was the 2006-2007 season where he actually left. But we'll, we're, we're probably going to do over six. So the aim is they won two La Liga titles and one Champions League in those time frames. They won the league in 2000 to 2001 and 2002 to 2003 and a Champions League in the 2001 to 2002 season. They then had three years with no titles after that, which is why then was acknowledged that he didn't actually do that good. So our aim is to get three title, three league titles and two Champions League in six seasons. I think it's it, it should be quite easy, but as you'll see in a bit when we get to the actual squad, Real Madrid's squad really needs an overhaul. There's a lot of old players and a lot of wages that we need to get rid of, particularly Gareth Bale. So we're predicted to finish first. Luckily for us, Barcelona are also in a massive crisis with a lot of debt. So they, although they've got like fantastic youth coming through, that I don't think they're actually that good to start with. Maybe if they have a good season this season and next season, they'll have they'll start to spend a bit of money. But their squad's not really that great at the moment either. So this is what they're saying is our best eleven. So it'll be Hazard on the left, Asensio on the right, Modric and Cruz in the middle again. Two very old players, so they're going to need to be replaced. Um, Benzema up top. Casemiro holding. Militao and Alaba at the back with Mendy and Nacho on the full-back, wing-back slots. And obviously Courtois in the middle. These are our expectations so that Club culture is play attacking football, which is what I'm going to be doing anyway. Sign high reputation players. Of course, we're going to be doing that because we want to sign a superstar every season. Sign players under the age of 23. Now, that is potentially something we're going to do because even though they're known for splashing the money during the Galacticos, they did have a lot of players that... But they weren't actually big signings. So the likes of Raul and Guti all came through the youth youth system, even Ica Casillas. And they they were big players that were, were playing for him during the same period, especially Raul and Casillas. Like they're club legends now. It's a five year plan. We've got expand stadium that's not really that important to us. Maintain the club status as the biggest team in the world. Maintain the club status as the most reputable team in Spain. Increase commercial revenue, which I'm sure we will do. Signing like all the superstars. 
work with your wage budget. And first season, they want us to win the La Liga, get to the semi-final of the Champions League, and they're not really bothered about the Super Cup. And then obviously going forward, it'll be just winning La Liga every season. So fingers crossed, we start this off well. So players that are expiring at the end of this season, Modric, Isco, Ma Marcelo, he's not going to be getting a new contract, nor will Gareth Bale. Like, Mar Marcello is really poor ability-wise now. Like, he's really declined. Benzema, I'll be looking to keep around as he's still a world-class player. Isco, so, I think when I was doing a bit of research, Zidane actually made a comment that Isco is the closest thing to how he was for Real Madrid back in the day. So I might look at keeping him around, but we will see how he gets on. How actually old is he now? So he's 29, so he's getting a bit old as well, to be fair. Right, so tactic-wise, this is what we're going with. This is something that I had already made beforehand and kind of tested a little bit. I'm probably still going to have to make tweaks as we go because I didn't test it very long. But it did have some okay results really. So left back, we've got a wing back on attack. Roberto Carlos used to play this position and he had the whole of this left side of the pitch where he used to maraud up and down. Zidane, who would have played on the left of the midfield, always used to kind of come into the middle of the pitch. So instead of having him as a left winger on like sort of inside forward or something, I thought I might as well just throw him in there as an advanced playmaker just so I know he's always going to be in there. He has got room from position though, so he can just kind of find pockets of space. At the back, you would have had Hierro, Fernando Hierro and Helguera who were just your standard centre-backs, really good in the air sort of thing. Ramos, obviously when he come, he also played there. On the right, you used to have Mikel Salgado, who was nowhere near as adventurous as Carlos, so I've actually put him as a fullback. He's still going to get up into like the midfield area where he can help recycle possession and maybe ping a few crosses into the forwards. In the defensive mid role we've got the anchor man which would have been Claude Makalele, who actually was fundamental to the Galacticos, but he never got acknowledged for it because he wasn't your fancy player, he was scoring goals and all that sort of thing. But he broke up absolutely everything sitting in front of that defence. And to be honest, I think he left in like two thousand three or something like that and that's when Real Madrid really st started to struggle which obviously shows how fundamental he was the other midfield you would have had Guti or McManaman someone along them lines who was just kind of your box the box sort of player wasn't a superstar as such like your Figos and your Zidans but they still did a sort of job. On the right used to be Figo and then I think Beckham used to play there a little bit as well but he also played in this central midfield role and he he, he kind of played wide but he would like drift a little bit in but I thought I'll just use him as, as a winger because tactics wise with my full back and being on support and not wing back we do want some sort of presence like down the byline here. And obviously Zidane, who was the left player, is here. Up front, you had Raul, who used to be the one that used to sort of drop back, pick the ball up, run at the defence. He scored a lot of goals. Some would probably say that he was a bit more of a shadow striker in how he used to arrive late into the box and stuff. But I kind of wanted another attacker so we've gone with a false nine Ronaldo who was the other striker would play up top and he was the more advanced he was the one that was constantly 
pushing the back line, looking for the long the long balls where he'd get in behind and take first time shots and score goals, which will probably be where Benzema will likely play. Obviously, this will be our tactic. So I put overlap left, overlap left. So as Carlos is going to be bombing down that side, they'll look to use him to get in in behind and pull the ball back and that sort of thing. I've gone with high tempo just because I want to make advantage of having so many players up top where if the chance is there, we haven't got to just pass the ball around. We can go a bit more direct if need be. Obviously, work ball into butts because I don't want to just be lumping the ball in. Whipped crosses just because... If we do get the ball out wide and we've got someone of good crossing ability, they can just whip it in. Someone like Benzema or even, I think Jovic will probably play false nine maybe. They, they are good in the air. Transition, we've got counter press so when we lose the ball, look to press it back and win it. If we do win, I have put Kara on just because again, we've got so many players in advanced areas. And what we will find, if you don't have that sort of thing on, when you're playing sort of short passing in general, is when you come up against teams that don't attack that often, you're having to like open them up as such, which, I don't know, I just thought counter would be a bit more, it'd be more sort of advantageous for us when teams do attack us. So our possession, I've gone with a higher line, not much higher, just because we are quite an attacking team, and I don't want to be camped in their sort of half. I do want teams to have a chance to come out with the ball so we can exploit it. And obviously much higher line of engagement, just because we have got a lot of players in advanced positions so they can press if need be. Right, so here we are, first game of the season, we're away to Sevilla. Not the easiest of games, really, as Sevilla are one of the top sides in Spain. But before we get to that, let's have a quick look at the transfers. So to start off, we sold Mariano, 27 million to Tottenham. He's not really a player that I did want to sell, but when they offered me 27, I thought I can potentially bring in like uh, two youngsters that we'll use like later on in the series, but Adiemu, the sh striker, can play out wide, 15.25 million, becomes a very good little player. He's probably not going to play every game, but I will sort of use him in a rotation until he develops more. And then we brought in Van Dijven, 8 million is a lot of money for someone of his current ability. But I know he does turn into a really good striker. And to be honest, in three or four seasons, as long as he's developed, even if we don't want to use him, we'll easily sell him for a lot more than eight. Pre-season. Not too bad. Obviously, we got smashed by PSG 4-0. Just shows that we're not really ready to compete with like the top teams of Europe. 2-2 draw away at Lille. Jekyll and Hyde performance, first half we were great, second half just nothing at all. Obviously the standard destroying of year reserves, 4-0. Shakhtar 4-1, Mariano actually scored a hat-trick. And then our last friendly which was Rins, we played really well and won 5-1. So let's get into this match. So this is the lineup we're going to be going with. Benzema up top. Vinicius Jr. just behind him, just so he can pick the ball up and run with it and stuff. In fact, have I actually put that as an option? Oh yeah, he already has it anyway. Um, Hazard on the right, Sensio in that sort of Zidane role, where he just finds space on this left side of the pitch. Modric, box to box, probably not the best for him with his age, but he'll still do a good job. Casemiro break everything up. Alaba bombing down the left. Nacho 
Militao, Vallejo, and obviously Courtois in goal. But if you look at our bench, we have actually got a decent bench. Like Valverde, Carbajal, Vasquez, Jovic, Rodrigo, Camavinga, Isco, all good players. Mendy. Um, obviously Adiyem is there as well. He might get some game time, depending on what the result is. But yeah, let's get into it. Right, so we're going to tell them we want to be impressed. Defenders need a strong defence. Midfielders need to dominate. And need an edge in attack. And I got an absolutely great response from that. And here we go. So let's get into it. I think I need to adjust this actually. So we want to go key highlights. And I like to use this data analyst one. Because you can really see your players and where they are in terms of shape and stuff. So, a bit of tiki-taka here at the back for Sevilla. They go long, Nacho gets in, intercepts. Benzema, can he finish? 1-0, but I think he might be offside here. If he's not, then that's a great start. Easy off. Yeah, he is. So annoying because Vinicius could have played in the other player to the right. Let's see this player here. Not good enough. Benzema should be on there. So this game, not much happening really in terms of highlights. We do look the better side though, which is a good sign. Right, and we've got an Asensio free kick. He's actually really good at free kicks on this. And he goes and scores, just as I say, that perfect timing. And our sort of good start gets a goal. Look at that, great free kick. So they haven't even had a shot on target yet. We've had six shots, three, off, three on target. And they finally had their first chance. But in terms of like XG and stuff, we're dominant here. Asensio uh, tips it wide. Playing some good football though. Right, Modric. Oh, he's put it over. So far, so good. This could be their first highlight, maybe. Oh, come on. Just give a penalty away. What are you doing? Is that Nacho? Did look like it to me. Yep, penalty. Oh, my God. We've dominated this game, and now we're going to be going in level. Such a stupid penalty to give away. Right, we're going to tell them we want more. Now they're coming into the game after that. They're down to 10 men though. Akun has been sent off. Right, now we've really got to make this count. Right, that's disappointing, that is. Don't like what I just saw. I'm not even sure who gave the penalty away, to be honest. Need to go back and look at it. Or maybe read the report. Right, Asensio. Back to Vallejo. Knocking it around at the back. Nacho's in acres of space. Hazard, Vinicius Jr. gives it back. Oh, why have you took so long to shoot there? I mean, it's a great block, but Hazard should have been hitting the trigger a lot sooner there.
Benzema has not really been in the game like that at all. Might have to look at making a change here. Yep, I'm bringing him off. 6.5 is not good enough for me. Go with Adeyemi. I mean, this is a little bit disappointing to be honest. We haven't really created anything. Looks like it's just going to play out. Maybe change you to attack. Put you on attack. Let's see how this one goes. Ten minutes left. Rakitic has picked up a card. Right, come on. We need to make get a goal here. Another free kick, Alaba this time. I don't know why he's taken that when Asensio is still on the pitch. Right, Nacho on the ball. Modric. All the way back to Courtois. Building from the back. Asensio. Adiemi scores on his debut. Fantastic. Now I'd like to see this a little bit closer. I mean, it's a great ball in behind Asensio. Yeah, and Adiemi just slides in ahead of Rakic. Great goal. And we finally got the breakthrough that we needed. Right, Modric in a bit of space. Hazard picks out Adiemi. Is he going to get a second? No. It's a great block from... Oh, no. Oh, genuinely wasn't paying attention there. That was a great block, though, from uh, Koundé or whatever his name is. So what actually happens here? Right, Hazard pings in behind. It's a great ball. Adiemi blocked. Uh, and he just gets the rebound. Great start to his Real Madrid career though. Two goals. Coming on as a sub for Benzema. Right, we're going to take off Modric. For Valverde. And Asensio is going to come off if we can. For Isco. Just to... Take a couple of minutes off the clock. Nacho is so aggressive in the challenge. Oh, he's got an overload. Great covering back from Hazard. They're working the ball well here, though, to say they've only got 10 men. Oh, that's fantastic. What a block, though, from Mendy. What football that was from Sevilla. The way they moved the ball there. That deserved the goal. Right, and that's the game. 3-1. Nice work, everyone. That was good, even though it did take you to the 80 something minute to get the breakthrough. They didn't really create anything really apart from that chance just to we give a give them a penalty. Saw pass of a training ground on display. Promising start. 
gold would fit in the player. Alright, we've started this series off with a 3-1 away win at Sevilla and our first three points. Can't really moan at that. New signing. Getting two as well. So does it, would it tell me here who gave the penalty away? No. Right, so let's just have a look. So on the schedule, we will probably come back and play these two games for the next one. Because they're pretty big games. Obviously that's been a, a Madrid derby away. And then Valencia, who are actually really good on FM, I think, this season. Yeah, that. so I'll play this one in between. And then when we come back, we'll jump into these two games. And probably have the end of transfer window, if anything happens. 